So in inorganic as well as organic chemistry, we're always concerned with the transfer of electrons. So electrons are able to transfer from one atom to another atom. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the octet rule. But before we talk about the octet rule, let's recall what the electron configuration of an atom is. So let's look at helium, neon, and argon. So the electron configuration is simply the layout of the electrons found within that atom. So let's look at helium. Now helium has two protons found in the nucleus and two electrons. These two electrons are going to be found in the 1s orbital. So the 1s orbital can have a maximum of two electrons and because helium has two electrons, these two electrons will be found in the 1s orbital. So let's go to neon. Now neon has 10 protons found in the nucleus and 10 electrons found in the orbital surrounding our nucleus. So our electron configuration for neon will be 1s2, so two electrons will be in the 1s orbital, two electrons will be in the 2s orbital, and uh, six electrons will be in the 2p orbital. Remember, they're actually three p orbitals. There's px, py, and pz, and each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So that means we're going to have a total of six electrons in our p orbitals. So once again, our orbitals within neon are completely filled, just like they were in helium. So let's look at argon. Argon has 18 protons found in the nucleus, 18 electrons, found in the surrounding orbital. So we're going to have two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, uh, six electrons in the 3p orbital, so a total of six in the p. Now we're going to have two electrons in the 3s orbital and 3p will have six electrons. So once again, every orbital within argon is completely filled just like it was in neon and helium. And in fact, these three atoms are noble gases. Noble gases are atoms that have electron configurations that are completely filled. So they have a perfect electron configuration. All the orbitals that can possibly be filled are filled. And that's exactly why noble gases are very stable. They have very stable electron configurations. And in fact, any atom that is not a noble gas will try to attain, so it will try to either lose or gain electrons such that its electron configuration matches that of one of the noble gases. And this is what we call the octet rule. So the octet rule is simply the process of filling electron shells or electron orbitals in a way such that an, an electron configuration that matches one of the noble gases is reached. So let's do an example. So here we have a carbon atom and we have a fluorine atom. So this carbon atom has six protons and six electrons. So it has six protons within the nucleus along with the six neutrons. And we have six electrons surrounding our nucleus. So two electrons will be in the 1s orbital. Two electrons will be in the 2s orbital and only two electrons will be in the 2p orbital. So that means that there are four more electrons that can fit into our p orbitals because the p orbital can have a maximum of six electrons. So if we go up here, that means that we want or carbon wants to gain four more electrons so that its electron configuration matches that 
of neon. So we basically want to attain this electron configuration. Carbon wants to attain this electron configuration. So that means that it is very likely that it will gain four electrons to form our perfect electron configuration. So if this carbon had four electrons floating around this atom, that means it would gain those electrons and these electrons would fill the remaining 2p orbitals. And that means once it gains the four electrons, it will have the 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6, the perfect configuration that matches neon. So notice that a neutral atom of carbon has a charge of zero. That's because it has six protons and six electrons. Now we have six protons. By the way, this six, this subscript, means six protons. It's the atomic number, which corresponds to the number of protons. So we have six protons, but now we have four plus six electrons. So we have a total of 10 electrons, just like neon does. And that means our charge will be negative 10 plus 6, so our charge will be 4. So this is an anion. So now let's look at fluorine. Now fluorine has 9 protons and 9 electrons. So once again our nucleus will have 9 protons and our neutral fluorine atom will have 9 electrons floating around the nucleus. So, once again, let's apply our octet rule and let's see how many electrons this fluorine atom, this neutral fluorine atom, needs to gain to obtain a noble gas configuration. So, since 9 is very close to 10, so this, this fluorine has 9 electrons, which is only one away, one less than neon, that means fluorine will tend to gain an electron to form our neon noble gas configuration. So once again, if we have an electron floating around this fluorine nucleus, it will tend to take that electron and place it into one of the 2p orbitals so that once it places it there, it has a noble gas configuration. So once again, this neutral fluorine atom gains one electron, puts it into the 2p orbital, and it becomes a electron configuration that matches that of neon. So it has two electrons in the 1s, it has two electrons in the 2s, and it has six electrons in the 2p. Now this guy's very happy because he's very stable, and that's because noble gases has, have very stable electron configuration. And that's basically what the octet rule is. It's basically a procedure, a process that you follow um, that will give you a noble gas electron configuration. So atoms such as nitrogen, such as carbon, fluorine, and other halogens are able to undergo this octet rule or and gain electrons to form this perfect noble gas electron configuration.